Boom! So today I'm going to be making some handles for carbide cutters that I bought earlier from Captain Eddie Castellan. Hey wood turners! So that's what I'm going to be doing today, so I say let's go ahead and take a look at the cutters. Oh yeah, sticking with the whole Captain Eddie thing, all you gotta do is watch. Okay, so here they are. This is a 3 8 inch uh, steel bar, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, it's been drilled and tapped and ready for cutters. Um, I picked up the blue 2 package, he calls it from Captain Eddie, and I did one thing is I swapped out these squares with rounds. So I have a bar with a round cutter on it and a bar with a radius square. So I just went ahead and cut up these two pieces of American elm. Now to hold one end of this in the lathe, I decided to use my wood turning chuck and I'll just bring up my revolving center to support the other end. I'm going to turn my speed up to about 1000 RPMs and we'll go ahead and true it up. couple flat spots but I'm not going to worry about that right now and uh, we can move on to drilling the hole. I've been thinking for some time about how the greatest way to drill this is going to be and I've been thinking about how to drill a square hole and I've come to the stunning realization that well you can't. I had another idea that's kind of complicated that involved a straight bit on the router and the splitting of a blank and I decided not to go with that because that's going to be a lot harder than it needs to be. And this does not have to be a perfect fit inside the handle. So with that in mind, the way that I'm going to go to drill this is just to round over these corners on the bar on my bench grinder and drill a hole that this can snugly fit into. <laughs> Okay, I've just ground this down to a pretty nice round, somewhat round shape, and that doesn't have to be perfect, just get it close. And I've drilled a 10 millimeter hole into this scrap of wood here, and I actually have a really nice fit in there. So I've installed that same 10 millimeter bit into my Jacobs chuck on my tailstock. I do want to make sure that I drill the right depth, so I'm just going to mark that with a little piece of tape. Test that fit with one of the bars. That looks pretty good. Okay, now the next thing we want to do is put the ferrule onto the end of the tool. Now get a load of this. This right here is a piece of copper pipe. It's three quarter inch and uh, about an inch long. And I'm just going to go ahead and put this onto the end of the tool right in front of the hole. I really like the handles on these uh, Sorby tools, they're pretty comfortable and I like even more the handle of my bowl gouge but this is really really long so I think I'm going to shoot for something about this length but around this kind of a shape. sawed off the bit at the end at the saw and now I'm going to use my spindle gouge to turn off the bottom of this and make it a little smoother. Okay. 
Okay, to glue the rods, the carbide cutters, into the wood handle, I'm going to be using epoxy. Before this stuff starts to cure, I'm going to take my towel and just start to clean off that squeeze out because I won't be able to do that later on and that'll probably be pretty tricky to clean off once it's dry. Alright guys, and that's it. They came out really well and I'm pretty proud of these. There's something rewarding about turning your own handles for a tool. You can make them to your own specifications and every time I use these tools now, there's always that connection to the piece. Now I know I'm going to get comments about a few things in the description, so I'm going to go over them. Number one, the finish that I used was automotive lacquer. That is a ready to spray, already thinned down clear coat lacquer that I just put into my spray gun using a little compressed air sprayed these guys down with three light coats before the fourth and final coat I wet sanded them and knocked off all the texture resprayed a final coat and then I took a very fine steel wool and just knocked the luster off of them and that makes it a little more comfortable to hold because they're not so plasticky feeling number two where can I buy these I will put a link in the description to Captain Eddie's page and you can talk to him if you have more questions specifically pertaining to the cutters themselves. But if there's anything to do with the turning of a handle, please leave your questions down below. Number three, what is the ferrule for? A ferrule provides more strength to the handle. Now, when you're turning, okay, you're going to be flexing that tool a lot from all the pressure that is being put under, especially if you're going to be hanging over the tool rest quite a bit like on the inside of a bowl or something. The ferrule here strengthens up the wood because if that was not there to provide that bit of strength, the bar of the tool would flex and break out of the wood. Always make sure you have some sort of a ferrule onto the end of your wood turning tools. Even on bench chisels, it's still an important thing. I'm not quite sure if I'll get questions about this, but I'm sure that there are people out there who are turning this to be their first wood turning tool and do not have any set of tools to turn the handle with. To solve this problem, I would recommend taping up the end of the bar, and this is only if you have to, and just turning with this tool, or either one, whatever you bought, just to get one handle done. I'd finish that handle completely, and if you're gonna make a second or third, turn them with the tool that you made. Just emphasis on the fact to tape up the end of that tool, and if you have a file or a sander, knock down some of the burrs, so if you do get a catch, it won't slice your hand open. The fifth thing that I'm sure someone will ask is how far should I put the bar into the handle? You should not put it in any less than three inches. Three inches is the minimum and you're kind of playing with fire there. Now I did put mine in three and a quarter originally and the reason that I sunk it in deeper than that is because it looked kind of silly to me. I had this short little like 12 inch handle with a super long bar sticking out the top. So I ended up drilling down and down and down, and I think my final depth was four or five inches. And like I said, you don't have to go that deep if you want to. I would recommend it to make sure you have a nice strong bond between the two parts, but no less than three inches. That's it for questions. Now I do have a shout out that I'd like to give out to a good buddy of mine, Jack Nelson on YouTube. Jack has another video on turning a tool handle, and it's a three part series on how to turn a handle with the set screws up top to take and swap out different bars and stuff from the handle. He's got a very nice little channel with some really great content and I'd appreciate it if you all go over there, check it out and subscribe. I will put a link to that in the description. And tune in next Friday for a new video and I'll see you all then.